So my topic was theater in Czechoslovakia under communism. Now a quick um, history. Theater really served as identity for the Czech people before the establishment of Czechoslovakia in 1918. Um, they were ruled by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Habsburgs, and Czech wasn't the national language. It wasn't used in any professional capacity. So theater was a way to preserve the language and in, um, be a rallying point for nationalist pride. Um, also, while under the German occupation during World War II, Czechs were allowed to assemble in Czech theaters, um, despite being, rule, being, I mean, being ruled by the Germans. Now, when co the Communist Party came to power in 1948, the theaters were subsidized, which gave them, which that means the state provided funding, and they also had a lot of oversight. Um, administratively, they could determine who was in charge um, of the theaters, and also they decided what types of performances were put on. Everything was viewed through the socialist realist ideology, so you couldn't be critical of the government, and a lot of the literature thinks that was a, um, a limiting form of creativity. Now, after Stalin's death, there was a liberalization of some of the party leadership, and that, uh, including Alexander Dubček, and it kind of came to its height in 1968 with socialism with the human face. So he kind of repealed all censorship, and this allowed a lot more artistic freedom. Um, a lot of major playwrights had their heyday at this time, including Václav Havel, who later became the president of Czechoslovakia. Now that didn't last very long, not even a full year before troops, the Soviet troops invaded um, and they purged sort of the liberal party leadership at the time to normalize everything, bring everything back to normal was what this period was called. Now small studio theaters or authorial theaters came to prominence at this time and they kind of rejected the standard form of theater. They didn't work off text-based scripts like standard pre-published material. They wrote their own. They used what they called text appeal and irregular dramaturgy. Um, so uh, there was a lot of improvisation. Shows were really kind of a, a mesh of poetry readings and monologues and audience interaction. And that was a way for them to kind of subvert, subvert censorship if there was nothing for the censors to look at and pre-approve. Now for actual playwrights who were writing actual full plays, um, they, there was use of a lot of metaphor. Plays would criticize fascism in the German government. And um, while audiences know that that was a metaphor for the current communist government, censors couldn't say anything about it because that would imply that they um, didn't want the Czech people to hate fascism. These are just some clips of shows at the time. They were very high energy, um, lots of audience interaction. Now, a quick note on something that's on La Terna Magica, which is a form of video and live theater interaction. So it wasn't video screens weren't used just as backdrop or background. The audience or the um, performers actually interacted with what was happening on the screens. This is a new form. Now, whereas the content was still under censorship at this time, this um, sort of form, this development of a different type of theater um, was able to sustain itself. Now, all the literature I read was based on adult theater. Um, there was no comments on puppetry or children's theater. Um, and that is an interesting thing that I would like to look at. Were children's theaters as highly censored or were they not really worried about it because they didn't think children would pick up on things or were they even more censored because, you know, children are the future and they want to instill in the, their future populace, you know, a positive attitude towards communism. Were the theater workers who worked in children's theater as, you know, revolutionary as the ones that working in adult theater because there's some literature that thinks that without theater, um, you know, the Velvet Revolution of 1989 never would have occurred. And um, so were people in children's theater just as influential or passionate about that? Thanks. Questions and comments are welcome, of course.